I come back to this question of different ways of doing H0. So let us say that and one of the overriding criteria is that let us make E00 E Hartree-Bock, you know one of the overriding criteria. So one I said is to add with H0 that E01 and then subtract in V, you will get it and but then the MP1 is still 0, okay, the MP1 will be still 0. But if you do look very carefully, I can look at not H0 plus a number, that number, but some operator, can I do like this? This is now an operator, okay. Then of course my V prime will now be V minus A and of course you will clearly see that if you take an operator then everything will change. But may I suggest that if I put this operator A such that A acting on psi Hartree-Fock is 0. Now if I do that, there are lots of ways to do that. Let us say I do A, A acting on psi Hartree-Fock is 0. If you do that, then you find nothing changes, correct? Because when I do E0, 0, this is what remains, A is anyway 0 because A acting on psi Hartree-Fock is 0. This does not mean that A is a null operator, please remember. I am only saying that action of A on psi Hartree-Fock is 0. So it is not a null operator, okay? So it acts on other determinants, it may give some value. If I do this, nothing will change, neither E00 0, 0, nor E01. On the other hand, if I say A Hartree-Fock, A psi Hartree-Fock is E01 psi Hartree-Fock, then something will change and I will get back the same thing as H0 plus V prime, except that I am saying H0 prime is not H0 plus E01, e but a number, but an operator whose eigenvalue with respect to psi Hartree-Fock is E01. Remember A is not this number operator because with respect to other determinants, it may give different value. But only when it acts on psi Hartree-Fock, it gives me E01 psi Hartree-Fock. If I do this, I will simulate the previous prime thing and results will still not change because everything with respect to psi Hartree-Fock. So basically psi Hartree-Fock H0 prime psi Hartree-Fock will become E Hartree-Fock, no doubt. But then again psi Hartree-Fock V prime psi Hartree-Fock will become 0 because this will become V and then minus A will give me not 1. So again it will become 0, okay. So V prime, V prime will give me E not 1 yeah, plus E Hartree-Fock but I subtract E not 1 again it will become same value, okay. So yeah. Oh, that is bad that we already know. Then, then my, then why, why, what did I do? I first asked the question, what is a good single determinant? If your sum over H of I is a good H naught, then I would argue that, that if I just take the determinant with H I eigenfunction, that would be also a good determinant. But I found through the variation method, that is not a good determinant. That is the result that we saw. And because psi Hartree-Fock is a very good determinant, I am now searching in a retro manner, what is a good H0? So I want to make psi Hartree-Fock eigenfunction of that H0. No, nothing will be lost here. What has it got to be lost here? Yeah, it is valid for Hartree-Fock, but this particular thing of choosing, not choosing H of I, has nothing to do with Brillouin's theorem because my psi Hartree-Fock is a good determinant. Is the in case of non-interactive problem means if it is not there, if this is not there, then of course there is no problem. What is the Hartree-Fock? Then there is nothing to do. Yes, because psi Hartree-Fock is a good determinant. No, I think I have to talk to you. I am mean, getting confused. Your question. See, I initially said, what is the best single determinant? We found it is psi Hartree-Fock. No, that we found out. Brillouin's theorem is also a consequence of that. So you can say it is related to Brillouin's theorem. So your answer is not wholly wrong. 
because Brillouin's theorem is also I told is anti for condition. But to say that it is because of Brillouin's theorem is not really a proper statement. It is the variation problem and we found that if I take the Eigen functions of H of i, those orbitals, they will not be the best. Because otherwise I would not have done Hartree fog. Since that is not the best, I am also decided not to take this as H naught for the same reason. Because my H naught should be a very good H naught, dominant part of H. The eigen, you understand, the Eigen function of sum over H of i is not a good wave function. That determinant is not a good determinant. So that is the reason I did Hartree fog and I that, and that is something I discovered rather after doing Hartree fog that that is not the best. So the best is Fock operator eigenvalues, not H. So then my H naught becomes sum of the Fock operators. And then my V is just refined, that is all, 1 by Rij minus that V R T fog, that is all. There is no problem, but you have to remember that, all right. So I want to tell you first that people have tried lots of tricks like this, but eventually it does not help. You know, the sum and substance, I am not going to go through all the tricks. Eventually it does not help. It is within this Mylar plus R thing, it is impossible to get away from the fact that the you do not get correlation energy at the first order. I think that is a very important fact that you really have to accept it, then, then only we will, we will go to the second order that the second order is where you will first start to get correlation energy. Uh, you can you can play around several things and in fact if you look at this article by Diner, Clavery, Maldu, they have done several such things. But you know it is not really very easy uh, to do the recovery of correlation energy at the first order. We can but our perturbation theory that we are devising is only for ground state. It works for ground state. Excited state perturbation is more complicated simply because you you may have a multi reference problem. We will discuss that later. Meaning degeneracy. So there may be many eigenfunctions with the same eigenvalue. So you have to take a linear combination of all of them. In H naught itself. So that is the reason excited state is a different thing and the, all the perturbation that we have done in 425 is also for ground state. We, we use excited states of H naught, but to represent the ground state of H. So that is why it is called ground state perturbation theory. Excited state is uh, not, I mean you cannot take one excited state of H naught and start to dig perturb. That will be a wrong way to do it, okay. Yeah, they are excited, excited determinants of H naught, H naught, of course, they are nothing to do with excited states. Of H naught, that is correct. That is not a problem. But now, what do you want to do? I am interested in ground. No. Yes. So that is first order. So first of all, I have to have is is E naught one. No. I have to first uh, sorry E one zero. H naught over what? Oh, that will be very bad. That will be very bad because who told you that this is a good approximation to excited state? No, no. We only discovered that for ground state, psi Hartree fog is a good because variation method is only for ground state. The upper bound theorem that we use only gives me ground state, okay. On the other hand, many chemists use this as an approximation to excited state. I am aware of it. They will say singly excited, so psi AR is a good approximation. It works to a large extent. If you do this, you will get some number. I am not saying the numbers will be terribly off. But suddenly, as far as chemistry is concerned, I do not know if psi AR is a good excited state approximation. There is no variational optimized. I have only optimized for ground state. So I will get some number. I have no problem. Of course, if you do this, I will get some number. But I mean, this number may be very poor, poor number if I add this and this. So what you are essentially telling, add psi AR, H expectation value with psi AR, you will get some number, that is very easy to do, some number you will get. But this is not really excited, further excited states have degeneracy, actual excited states have degeneracy problem, that there are two states which can be very close in energy 
and then it is much more difficult you have to take linear combinations and so on so that so that is uh, that is other problem okay so there is i mean this itself is a bad approximation but other than that also even if you do this uh, there could be problem because of degeneracy in actual excel states so there are uh, there are so it would have been very nice of course what you are saying is that ground state first excited state, each of them determinant would be an approximation to corresponding excited states but unfortunately it doesn't work out only in the linear variation and i have done that in ci you get an upper bound so linear variation of ci is very important in fact we have discussed this for the mcdonald theorem but uh, yeah for the perturbation it's uh, dangerous to do so all that we are discussing in this course is only ground state perturbation theory okay all right okay so so having done this we now kind of uh, agree that to re whatever we are doing so far is very nice but we have not done anything as far as correlation energy is concerned right <laughs> we have still not recovered anything with correlation energy so we have to do second order perturbation and uh, much as you won't like to have second order perturbation it's a little bit more clumsy you have to do it if you want to do correlation so that is all that i will do the second order i will not do third order because order by order as you go perturbation series becomes complex but those who can will be able to see how to do it's a matter of detail but at least the second order perturbation we must do we have done this as a general in a part part of general perturbation theory again in the previous course those who have taken the course 4 to 5 i have done already second order but i will redo it so that we can do for the hartree fock perturbation theory okay and i already did last time the first order perturbation theory so we can start from that so remember how i did it we took h not plus lambda v then we wrote psi 0 0 right plus lambda psi 0 1 and so on lambda square note again that it is not important whether you write as half or you don't write as half so it doesn't matter so let's not worry about that is equal to e lambda which is e 0 0 plus lambda e 0 1 right so lambda square e 0 2 and so on and then again psi 0 0 If I write half, they will only get they will only get scaled. The actual values will get scaled, but it doesn't matter. You know, if you just add by a number, a multiply by a number, nothing changes. So we what we first did, we of course saw that this is zeroth order is h naught psi zero zero e zero zero psi zero zero, which is of course something that we did. We also recovered the first order. First order again, I write it h naught psi zero one plus v psi zero zero equal to e 0 0 psi 0 1 plus e 0 1 psi 0 0 okay which I rewrote little bit nicely as h naught minus e 0 0 psi 0 1 plus v minus e 0 1 psi 0 0 equal to 0 right. and I, I, I somehow love this way of writing I told you because it gives me an easy way to sorry easy way to partition h minus e psi equal to 0. So I am really partitioning h minus e psi equal to 0 first order. So this can be 0th order which is h naught minus so 0th order of h minus e into first order of this first order of h minus e into 0th order of this. So if I do this continue to do this I can write the second order you know either by looking at lambda square term or by simply writing h minus e psi so what will be the second order equation h not minus e 0 0 psi 0 2 right now everything has to be second order so it will have 0 into 2 plus 1 into 1 v minus e 0 1 into psi 0 1. Now this will have second order here h minus e. What is second order of h minus e? h has no second order. h has only first order. Only e 0 0 has second order. So it will become minus 
e 0 2 psi 0 0 right. Remember minus do not forget minus because that is important because it is h minus e. So, minus e 0 2. So, that becomes your second order equation and you can actually write third order, fourth order everything. We will stop here. You remember by projecting this equation with psi 0 0 that is multiplying by psi 0 0 star and integrating, we got this term as 0. So, this actually got cancelled. We had psi 0 0 v psi 0 0 e equal to e naught 1. Correct. So, that was the I just want to remind you how did I get and we also notice that for e 0 1 I do not need psi 0 1. I only need psi 0 0 and v which is well defined. So, let me see if I do the same thing what do I get for e naught 2. Before I do this let me also say that the perturbation equations are conveniently derived by a normalization which is called the intermediate normalization. I will spend a little time on this. Note that what is normalization? You normally say that if you integrate the wave function, the mod square of the wave function or complex conjugate multiplied by itself and integrate, it should be 1. That is a normal normalization. In the intermediate normalization, we are assuming something else that if I do the integration in the following manner, the 0th order with the full d tau that should be equal to 1. So, I take the exact wave function multiply by the conjugate of the dominant part of the wave function. Now, again remember by my definition this is the dominant part of the wave function which is psi hat trip off because this is an Eigen function of h naught and then if I integrate that should give me 1 psi is of course psi 0 0 plus psi 0 1 plus psi 0 2 etcetera. Remember lambda is gone because only at lambda equal to 1 my h of lambda becomes h. So, just the lambda lambda squares are gone. So, I have written in this manner. Again as I said the factor half and 1 by 3 factorial I have already absorbed. So, it is not a Taylor series, it is really a power series that I am writing. So, my psi becomes psi 0 0 plus psi 0 1 plus psi 0. So, how do I make this equal to 1? Remember my psi 0 0 star psi 0 0 is already 1. So, what I am actually in effect here I am assuming that all the correction terms, all the correction d tau equal to 0, all corrections. So, I will say 1, 2, 3 etcetera. So, I will generally write correction k, kth correction for k equal to 1, 2, 3 etcetera. Now, again you can argue that this is a sufficiency condition simply because you could have argued that this plus this sum could have been 0, but I think for a convenience I am suggesting that all corrections of the wave function if I integrate with the 0 th order wave function they must be 0. Okay? If that is so then automatically this normalization is followed. So, this is the normalization that we will see. Later on we will see that it is very easy to do this because remember I had all the determinants of H, H naught. All I need to do is to write these corrections in terms of all determinants except psi hat reform because all of them are orthogonal. So, if my correction terms is a linear combination of first excited, second doubly excited, triply excited only and not hat reform then automatically this will be followed because there the determinants form an ortho orthogonal space, orthonormal space sorry. So, it is not very difficult to follow at all. Okay? So, in fact that is what I am going to do, but right now let me derive the equations using this and then we will stop today. Okay? So, let me just derive the equation for E naught 2. So, not I am writing in Dirac notation. In Dirac notation, this means any psi 0 0 with psi 0 k equal to psi 0 k psi 0 0 equal to 0 for k equal to 1, 2, 3. 
please remember only the corrections okay so this is my restatement of intermediate normalization which automatically means that psi 0 0 psi 0 is equal to 1 which is the exact ground state right so this is the exact ground state of h because you have this psi 0 0 here so that gives you 1 and the rest becomes 0 this also means that if I take psi 0 0 because you may ask the question what happens to the full normalization. So of course the first term is psi 0 0 psi 0 1 which is 1 psi 0 0 psi 0 0. After that you have all cross terms psi 0 0 psi 0 1 psi 0 1 psi, they will all become 0. But there are terms like this psi 0 1 psi 0 1 right plus psi 0 2 psi 0 2 the norm of the corrections right and so on and also cross terms like psi 0 1, psi 0 2 etc etc lots of cross terms which are which are not orthogonal because they are only orthogonal to psi 0 0. All such terms will be there and in, in fact in particular I may mention that this will be actually nothing but I mean it cannot be 1, it is usually greater than 1, it cannot be 1 that is important question. So, when I use intermediate normalization, I do not assume that psi naught is fully normalized. So, both I cannot do together. So, intermediate normalization and normal normalization are incompatible. Can I use the word incompatible? Means both of them will not go together. So, I am actually sacrificing that full normalization because the equations become simpler. So, please remember. However, after I get psi 0, I can always renormalize by writing the norm. And remember also that if I am expanding these in terms of determinants, there are lots of orthonormality that remains. So, they will all become lots of interesting things will happen. You know, it is very easy to write, but the point is that I can renormalize, but when I renormalize, this 1 will vanish, 1 will become some coefficient. So, basically, your size psi will be some coefficient times psi 0, 0. That is the trick catch that not only that I have make this equal to 0, this 0, but also when I have expanded this, I have 1 here. That is important. Otherwise, this would not have happened. If this would have been some number, then again this would not have been happened. So, when I renormalize, that is what is going to happen. A number will come multiplying everything, and you can renormalize. So, that is not a big problem. But for convenience, I am going to use intermediate normalization. Okay. So let me go back to the second order equation now, which is written there. And let me do the same projection with first psi 0, 0, exactly like I did. So let me write down the projection psi 0, 0, h0 minus e0, 0, psi 0, 0, 2. Okay, plus. So I'm writing now in Dirac notation all the integrals, psi zero zero, v psi zero one minus e zero one psi zero zero psi zero one. I hope all of you can write easily minus e zero two equal to zero. Please note that this term, this part, I have split. So, I have written psi 0 0 v psi 0 1 minus e naught 1 is a number which comes out psi 0 0 psi 0 1. Quite clearly you know the reason why I have written now because I can identify that this term is 0 because of intermediate normalization. So, I am working explicitly with intermediate normalization. So, this is 0 and this is 0 anyway just as in the first case because this is 0 psi 0 0 is the Eigen function of h naught with e naught 0 as Eigen value. So, this is gone. So, I have only two terms and then I can write e 0 2 very easily as psi 0 0 v psi 0 1. Just as I wrote the e 0 1 as psi 0 0 v psi 0 0, it actually looks exactly similar except that it is a second order. So, somewhere one more order has to increase. So, this is first order. So, it is no longer average value of v with respect to anything but a matrix element. Okay? 
What is interesting is that you can actually write an nth order equation and find out is by the same way by projection with psi 0 0 a general E 0 n which is psi 0 0 V psi 0 n minus 1. A more general equation, I am not going to do this, but I think it is trivial to see. If you just do this, go through this exercise, write the nth order, you will see everything else will fall off. Because of intermediate normalization, everything else will fall off very easily and, uh, and this will actually have just this, this term, okay. E not, and last term will remain, E not n psi 0 0 psi 0 0. So that is the only thing that will remain. So of course, you have to work with this. But now you realize that to work with this, I need psi 0 1. I have not bothered about it yet. What is the correction to the wave function at the first order? So that is something where I will start next time. That what is the correction to the wave function at the first order? If I know this, then only I can get back to E dot 2. And to do this, I have to go back to my first order equation. So I let me write again the first order equation, remind you. So I will go back to the first order equation because I need psi 0 1. If I write Dirac notation consistently then everything should be k minus uh, V E 0 1 psi 0 0 equal to 0. Remember writing these equations are very, very easy. Just scale down 1, you know 2 to 1, 1 to 1 to 0 and this term is not there. So, it is very easy to write. So, we will have to go back to that equation and then find how do I get psi 0 1 and we will do that tomorrow. But let me first tell you that I already have a clue because I know my psi 0 1 is orthogonal to Hartree-Fock and I have all the eigenstates of H naught. So, I will what I am going to do is to make a linear combination with all determinants psi AR, psi ABR, all singly, doubly, everything. It should be full space except psi hat reform because I am I am I am going to force that condition. So psi hat reform won't be there. So I already know how to do it. All that we have to find out is what are the combination coefficients. When I expand, what are, so that is what I am going to find out. Once I find out, I am going to stick this here, and I will get E not two. Okay, so that will be your MP two correlation analysis. We'll 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 derive this everything. Right now, remember, I am writing in a more generic way, and after that, I will bring in Hartree-Fock. I will expand in terms of spin orbitals. I, again, right now, there is no spin orbital here. All this can be done with Slater rules. So, that is why Slater rule is very, very important. We will need, as you go here to MP2, we will need one more Slater rule, which I said I will defer the type C, where you have one Hartree-Fock here, another which is two occupancy difference. I had done Hartree-Fock, 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 singly excited. Now doubly, so two determinant differing in two spin orbitals, and I will also say that is the end of the Slater rule, because for all our atomic and molecular problem, when you have three determinant, everything is zero. The Hamiltonian matrix element is zero because V has only two particle operators; it can't, it can't connect three, three, three differences, so it becomes zero. So the type C that I will discuss is the only one. So that is one more technical thing that I had to present, and then I will go to the actual expression of. MP2 correlation analysis. Okay, and then we will discuss a lot more things about perturbation theory, how to actually apply. And at some point of time, I am also, I also want to do uh, what is called the second quantization. It is a technique which is very routinely used in correlation theory. So far, we don't need it, but uh, the second quantization simplifies life. Many things you can write very nicely. I will uh, choose my time when I should do second quantization. I have not decided. But at least uh, I will be finishing in this week the most of the perturbation theory.